Prophet Tina, and welcome to uh, our talk this evening. Uh, we're going to be talking tonight about, in the area of deliverance, we're going to talk about can a Christian have a demon? What do you think about that? Do you think that a Christian, bona fide, card-carrying believer in Jesus Christ can have a demon? Well, let's talk about that because there's a lot that's going on right now in the area of deliverance. And the Lord has called my husband, Jonathan, and I to bring deliverance to the body of Christ. It's the same ministry that Jesus had, among other things, in his healing. Uh, he also delivered people from demons, and it's one of those forgotten ministries of Jesus Christ. For the most part, the body of Christ, the church didn't want to talk or doesn't want to talk about deliverance, and they don't want it in, in the churches. They want to hide it in the back room somewhere, but... As far as I can see and as far as I know, Jesus never hid the fact that he was uh, performing deliverances on people or that people needed to be delivered. Okay, and so one of the very first recorded deliverances uh, in the scriptures is when Jesus was in the temple bringing the word. And one of the bona fide uh, card-carrying Pharisees in the church <laughs> or in the temple at that time started manifesting a demonic presence, let's put it that way. Uh, and Jesus cast this demon out of the man right there in the temple. They marveled. Uh, they were amazed. Where does he get this kind of authority? Who is this person, you know, that carries that kind of authority that he can speak to a devil, he can speak to a demon, and it will abscound. Wow. <laughs> you know, that was something very new to uh, the world at that time. Uh, there were not too many people doing that kind of ministry, you know, where they would talk to a demon and tell it to go and it would leave. And so this was all brand new, uh, a, a new way of doing, uh, how can I say, belief in God at that time, that somehow God, okay, believed in the fact that he wanted his people to be free. He wanted his people to have liberty and then he sent someone who had the power and the authority to present that liberty and sustain that liberty in one area as far as deliverance from demons is concerned. So praise God uh, for that fact. But tonight we're going to be talking about the Christian community and this community that we're in that wants to hide deliverance, you know, in the back room, you know, that wants to put it aside uh, and people are coming to church every day. God is sending them into the church because they have needs. They're coming to church to get healed, to get delivered, and to get set free. And there's been a whitewashing or a watering down of the gospel as it concerns deliverance because there is a, a way of thinking, a mindset out there that says that, well, we're Christians. We don't need to be delivered from the devil. When we accepted Christ as our personal Savior, when we believed uh, that he lived and that he died, uh, that his blood that, sh that was shed in his resurrection frees us from demonic oppression. And of course, the scripture tells us that for this purpose was the Son of God manifested. It says that in 1 John 3, 8, that he might destroy the works of the evil one. So there's been this teaching in the church of Jesus Christ that once you receive Jesus Christ, once you become a Christian, once you become a believer, that demons can oppress you. You're free from demonic control. You're free. You're not, you don't have demons that bother you. Well, and they keep perpetrating that teaching. I uh, had gotten my son to, to go forth and to, to go to a deliverance minister and see if there was anything there that he needed. But he had friends that was telling him that that wasn't necessary, okay? He didn't, he didn't need that. Do you realize that Demons are walking in the church every time the doors open and the demons are in the people that have arrived at church. And most of them are believers and they've got things that are going on in their lives that they have not been able to get rid of. And they're coming in the doors seeking help, seeking deliverance, thinking, thinking that this is the place where they can be, where it's safe, and that God loves them so much that he wants them to be set free. Well, that's absolutely true. He does love you that much where he wants you to be set free. And that's why Jesus told us to go forth, lay hands on the sick, and he told us to cast devils out. He did it. 
in almost every day of his ministry here on earth for three and a half years, he was casting devils out of folks. He was healing people. And then he said, he gave, he told the disciples, I'm giving you the same power. I'm giving you the same authority, okay, to cast devils out. And so our question today is, okay, well, those, peoples weren't ne- those people that he was casting the devil out weren't necessary Christians or believers at the time. He hadn't died on the cross and he hadn't ascended yet. You know, so maybe they needed to be delivered from demons and rightly so they did. But I want to tell you that the ministry of the first church, a very important and integral part of the first church, the first believers, was to cast devils out of people. Okay, before you even got delivered, I mean, before you even got uh, baptized in in those days, you needed to go through a deliverance uh, service or a deliverance anointing and grace to cast out whatever was in you that was not like Jesus, that was not like God. And so can a Christian have a demon? (laughs) Okay, Uh, and so that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. We know that as we look at the news today, there have been so many noted ministers, noted, noted preachers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I'm going to pick on the leaders first. I'm not just talking about the people in the pews now. I'm talking about the leaders, you know, the ones that we look to, you know, for the word of God. The ones that we look to, you know, for teaching and for training in our most holy faith. These are the ones that we have seen fall. Many of them have fallen okay, fallen uh, into sin as God has allowed their lifestyle to be uncovered. Don't want to mention any names here right now, but you know you're seeing them in the news almost every week now. There's even um, um, a YouTube program that a young man does, and that's all his program is, is showing uh, ministers, leaders who have been believers in Jesus Christ who had another lifestyle, a hidden lifestyle that God uncovered, where they were molesting children, uh, molesting boys, molesting girls, uh, and uh, all kinds of uh, manner of uh, sickness that you wouldn't think that a leader in the body of Christ uh, would be doing. So why are they involved in these sins? Why are they doing these things where the scriptures clearly tell us that this is evil, that it's not of God, that it's of the devil. There's certain things that we are told not to do, not to perform, you know. And, and here these leaders are, you know, being uncovered in these sins that they've been doing. I mean, horrendous things that, that you know, that are just unspeakable. They're unspeakable, the things that these believers uh, in Jesus Christ have been doing. So the question again is, can a Christian have a demon? So what is it that's causing them to do these sins? Are they flagrantly disregarding what the word of God says? Okay, Uh, many of these noted and respected ministers, even uh, prophets who have uh, not exactly told the truth. You know, what is causing this kind of uh, thing, these kinds of things to happen with leaders who are preaching to us about these things, not to do them? The scriptures are clear we study the Bible, the Bible is clear, no fornication, <laughs> no lying. You know, Jesus said, look, love your, love me, love God, love me, and love your neighbor as yourself. You know, those are uh, all the Ten Commandments rolled up into one, so no murder, no coveting your, your uh, neighbor's wife. You know, all kinds of uh, demonic, uh, demonic sins that are happening, and the only thing that we can attribute them to is the devil. You know, that old Flip Wilson program, Geraldine, you know, I don't know if you guys are old enough to remember that, but he made a lot of money in his television show, okay, by playing a woman, okay, and and his mantra was, the devil made me do it, okay? And so we're finding now that as deliverance ministers, there are many things that can be in your life that you haven't gotten set free from that the devil could be at hand, the demons inside your life as a Christian. So you don't believe a Christian can have a demon, all right? Well, let's go to Acts chapter 5 where we read about Ananias and Sapphira. Ananias and Sapphira were a husband and wife, and they were a part of the very brand new Christian community. And this community that had believed in Jesus, Jesus had already ascended. This is in the Acts of the Apostles. Well, they 
And they all had everything in common, the scripture says, and they would come and sell their items and put it all together, you know, so they could all benefit by what everybody else had. And so Ananias and Sapphira sold some property, all right, and they decided that they were only going to give a certain, certain per portion of it to, uh, the, let's say, the church. It wasn't called the church at that time. Let's just say the body of believers, where Peter was in charge there. And so they came in one day after they had sold some property and actually didn't give all the money that they had, uh, had gotten uh, from selling the property. And they had made up in their minds that they were only going to give a certain amount and somehow the Holy Ghost did not like it. The scripture said, Peter said to them, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit? To lie to the Holy Spirit. Why has Satan filled your heart? Now, this was a believer in Jesus Christ. This, he was part of the, uh, the believing community, you know, at that time. So did he have a demon? Who could talk to you and make you change your mind or do something that's out of sorts, that's not, that you shouldn't be doing? Okay, break one of the spiritual laws or break a law, you know, that, that the scriptures tells us not to do. So what Peter said was, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? Christian, who was overcome by the words of Satan, telling him to lie to God. All right, so was that something coming from the outside of him, or was that something already on the inside of him that had not been regenerated yet? Well, he and his wife, because they lied to the Holy Spirit. You read the story in Acts chapter 5. Both of them lost their lives because of that lie. So in answer to the question, can a Christian have a demon? And I would like to say and let you know, yes, you can if you're a Christian. And that may be the reason why some of the things that are going on in your life that you haven't been able to get free from. Okay, so we know that uh, let's see, there's some stubborn issues that go on in our lives. We haven't been able to overcome them like anxiety, depression. We need healing. We get all kinds of illnesses, you know, and we go to counseling and counseling hasn't worked the way it should. We go for inner healing. Inner healing is great, but it hasn't done the total job that it needs to do, do and it hasn't worked for everyone. Okay, and so those problems that you're having and your mindsets, you know, in the way that you do things, okay, in the way that you, you know, the, the, the things that are drawing you to do things wrong that you don't want to do, you actually could have a demon, even though you're a believer in Jesus Christ. You're probably dealing with a demon when you've done all that you know to overcome a persistent problem and there's no breakthrough. Okay, so you may think in these times that there's too much emphasis on the devil. And you may want to think, well, it's in my flesh. Well, there are some things that may be in your flesh, you know, but there are other things that are because of demonic activity uh, in your life, okay? So you're a Christian, and you want to know how you could have a demon. You know, you see the preachers that have fallen. You see how the Holy Spirit is exposing their sins, okay, and how somehow they've had a seared mind believing sometimes in some cases with some of these guys they were believing their sin was inconsequential that it wasn't important and and didn't repent of their sin before they died okay and so here's one of the ways that you can tell just one there's so many ways that you can tell whether or not you have a demon or not okay and one of the ways that you can tell is if you are being tempted to do evil or to do something wrong not only are you tempted to it in your fresh flesh, but you're driven to do something that you really don't want to do. You've confessed, I don't want to do this. Why am I doing this? Okay, and you make up in your mind, I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm not going to have this problem anymore. And you tell yourself that and you really mean it. And then you find yourself walking to do that very thing that you told yourself that you wouldn't do. All right, that may be a demon that's driving you. If you're having desires that are perverted, okay that is actually a demon that's tempted you you know if you're pulled into something and forced into something then that could be a demon as well okay again things that you swore that you wouldn't do anymore 
and you're still being tempted and you're still getting into that now other things could be persist as well generational curses that manifest in, in family illness family personality problems family quirks could be demonic oppression from the generations past okay so you have demonic forces that want to bring destruction to you because Satan's job is to kill, to steal, and to destroy. And anything that he can perpetrate in your life based on the weaknesses that you have, remember you're drawn away, the scripture tells us, into sin by the desires of your own flesh, by your lusting, okay? And so, so the enemy's job is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That's what he does. And what he wants to steal, kill, and destroy is you. He wants to keep you away from the power of God. He wants to keep you away from living the total Christian life in power that, and authority that Jesus has called us to live in. And so we have been blaming ourselves. We've been blaming anything and everything except the true culprit of your problems. And it is the devil. And there are demons that can be on the inside of you causing you to do this. And you need to have deliverance. Jesus' ministry of healing and bringing forth, preaching the gospel, part of that ministry, a big part of that ministry was deliverance from demonic forces. He knew uh, how to speak to the devils. And the other thing is that they knew who he was. You remember the Gadarene? the guy that had a legion of demons you know the demons spoke to Jesus Jesus was just in the area and the demons came over to Jesus and said hey you son of God don't don't torment me before my time this is talking through the man but it was the demons that were on the inside of him okay and so we just want you to know that we, we are going to be on um, a ministry effort by God himself as he's called us to do this praise God to preach the gospel, to set the captives free. That's why Jesus came. In Luke 4, 18 and 19, Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor and he sent me to heal the brokenhearted and to preach deliverance to the captives and the recovering of sight to the blind and to set at liberty those that are bruised and to preach an acceptable year of the Lord. This is an acceptable year of the Lord where God has released a great deliverance anointing in the body of Christ. And you can tell the, Christ, the body of Christ need deliverance because of all that stuff that's been happening over the last four or five years, Christians got themselves involved in attitudes, uh, uh, breaking off friendships, you know, for political reasons or non-political reasons and, and, and that spirit of division that was in the body of Christ. Well, we know that unity is the blessing of Jesus Christ, that peace is the blessing of Jesus Christ and joy is the blessing of Jesus Christ. And the body of Christ went a little aside. They went a little askew, I think, of the true purpose that they are as Christians, as believers in Christ Jesus. And so Jesus said in 1 John 3, 8, it is for this purpose that the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the evil one no matter where they manifest. And there's been some evil manifesting in the lives and the hearts of those who believe in him. And so he doesn't care where the evil is. He's going to destroy the works of the enemy no matter where the enemy raises his head, whether it's in Christians or non-Christians, wherever. But we are called to believers first, to the house of God first, to clean it up first, okay? This word, this bread, okay, the scripture says, deliverance is the children's bread. And this bread, Jesus says, I am the bread of life, okay? And so this bread, this knowledge is for those who believe, okay? And these signs shall follow them that believe, he said, in Mark 16, 17, in my name, they shall cast devils out. So the disciples went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord working with them as they preached, confirming that word of deliverance, confirming that gospel, confirming that word of healing with signs and wonders following. Praise God. And so as deliverance is the children's bread, okay, 
let's talk a little bit about that. God has always had angels of deliverance, and in a portion of the scripture, it says the arrow of God's deliverance, the arrow of the Lord's deliverance, and it's needed because the demonic forces that are manifesting today, okay, the, the, the devil is really showing new tactics. They've been released on the earth. You know, this whole thing with the pandemic, all right, new demonic entities have been raised up and some of the methods of deliverance are outdated and ineffective as, as the kingdom of darkness has taken a deeper work inside of the house, okay? Our house, the temple of the living God is, is our bodies. Our bodies are the temple of the living God, the temple of the Holy Spirit. And the enemy is coming with new tactics. He's walking to and fro throughout the earth, seeking whom he may devour. And he wants to devour you, especially you. There was a, a psychiatrist. I heard this story from, um, from Isaiah, Isaiah Salivar, where he told the story of a psychiatrist that was sitting in on a Christian deliverance. And they were doing the deliverance on, on, the, on the person and the psychiatrist asked, uh, as the devil manifested, he asked the devil, well, why would you torment this woman, the Christian, and not me? And you know what the demon told the man? This is on a, in a live deliverance. He said, uh, we don't want you. We don't need you. We already got you. <laughs> you know, we don't need to torment you. She's a Christian. We want to torment her because we don't want her spreading that gospel of Jesus Christ, okay? And so, you know, the thing is that if you're already in the hands of the enemy, you're not going to see this kind of thing happen as much. But however, this demon, and they say demons lie all the time, but sometimes demon tells the truth, told Jesus the truth when Jesus asked it what his name was. So in this particular instance, this demon said, we don't really want to deal with you. We want to deal with her because she's the one that's going to destroy our kingdom. So we want to get to her first. Some, I'm paraphrasing. So you have to understand that the enemy is walking to and fro throughout the earth, seeking whom he may devour, and he desires to, desire to devour you. So if you have any open doors, if you have any sins, if you have anything that's going on on the inside of you that can be a portal to the enemy, he's going to pop in your life, and he's going to pop on the inside of you, and he's not going to leave until somebody tells him to go. you got to recognize that he's there. All right, and so we're going to be talking some more on this subject. This is just the first part of what I'm talking about. We're going to go, uh, this is the first um, part of the deliverance information that I'm going to be sharing with you. In our next session, we're going to be going over the new demonic tactics that have been released, uh, giving you more information on how you can know whether or not you have a demon, because deliverance is the children's bread. And, and this is what, what uh, I wanted to share one more thing with you before we end this session, okay? In Isaiah 62, 6, God said, I, through Isaiah the prophet, he said, I've set watchmen upon the walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day and night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silent. The deliverance ministry and those of us who have been called to deliverance for a long time had to keep silent especially in the church because they didn't want to hear about it you know if you had this kind of ministry going on you had to do it somewhere outside of the church way in the back room somewhere downstairs in the basement it wasn't a mainstream anointing and grace when jesus it was always mainstream with jesus he didn't hide uh, anything when he was setting people free okay when people were getting delivered it wasn't it wasn't uh hidden and so we are bringing deliverance, me and other deliverance ministers like myself, John Ramirez, Isaiah, Isaiah Salivar, I even love Alex uh, Pagani, Ed Citronelli, bringing the deliverance ministry, especially Barb Larson, you know, the grandfather of deliverance in our, in our, uh, in our uh, time, in our season, bringing deliverance to the foreground, to the forefront, okay? and taking it out of the back rooms and, and taking away the fear that the leaders have of losing members, uh, you know, of losing money because of this kind of ministry. Because in times past, they told you not to do it. It was scary. You shouldn't be doing that stuff. That's not the stuff you should be messing with. Don't, uh, don't be messing with no, no demons and stuff. People were afraid of the enemy, 
afraid of what the enemy can do. God has raised up a new set of deliverance ministers that are no way, no how, afraid of what the devil can do. In fact, their fear is, is of God, of what God <laughs> will do to them if they don't do the work that he's called them to do. And so you're going to see more and more deliverance in the foreground. And God is going to be allowing the anointing and grace of his Holy Spirit to reveal, even if you need to be delivered, even if you have demonic forces that are holding you back, or that are keeping you back. Fear of failure, failure. Fear itself is a demonic oppression, okay? And so we cannot keep silent anymore. We, and this is what Jeremiah said. He said, his word was in mine heart as a fire shut up in my bones and I couldn't forbear. The deliverance word is like a fire shut up in my bones. It's like a fire shut up in the bones of John Ramirez, Isaiah Salivar, you know, Alex Pagani, Ed Citronelli, and we cannot forbear any longer, okay? It will be on us if we don't share with you and tell you and teach you what God is telling us to tell you and to get you delivered from the demonic forces that have crept up into your life and are keeping you back from the full blessing that Jesus brought, the fullness of joy, the fullness of peace, of peace you know, that, that Jesus brings and you have no peace because you can't sleep and you're all anxious and you're, you know, you're depressed and down. And these are Christians that we're talking about. Well, those could be demonic forces that are working against you, okay? And so God's desire is the church gain a deeper revelation of deliverance, all about deliverance. We've got to go there. Some of the weapons, like I said, of our warfare are outdated and they're ineffective, okay? But the word of God is alive, Okay, the word of God is spirit and it's life. And God is bringing new revelation and new understanding in this area of deliverance from demons. Yes, deliverance from demons. It's the D word, deliverance <laughs> from demons to destroy the works of the, evil, of the evil one, okay? And so we're going to see you in our next session, okay? Because God wants to release some new weapons to you, some new understanding to you, some new revelation to you to get you free so that you can walk in the true freedom that Jesus brought to you. So whom the Lord set free is free indeed. God bless you. Until next time.